Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another video at the Pharmacist Academy! Woo! Multiple infusion rates and titrations. Ooh, scary! But don't fear, Pharmacist Academy is here. Now calculating the initial rates are easy, right? For example, a 500 ml bag of drug A to infuse over 4 hours has a rate in mLs per hour of 125. It gets a little complicated when you're, when you're asked to find the initial infusion rate and then titrate either up or down. When I say titrate, I'm referring to increase and or decrease in the infusion rates. In this video, I will show you how to go about solving those questions in the most understanding way possible. If you ever had issues with these type of questions, that ends now. <laughs> okay, let's begin. So in this video, I'm going to have two prescriptions. And for each prescription, we're going to have the patient's information here. What you need to pay attention to is the patient's weight. Now, in the body of the prescription itself, we have 200 milligrams of drug X and 100 ml of either normal saline, dextrose, or any other diluent, right? It doesn't matter in this specific video because we're not going to be utilizing that, okay? Now, the direction is asking you to begin the infusion at 10 micrograms per kilogram per minute. Increase the infusion by 2 micrograms per kilogram per minute every 5 minutes. Question number 1. Calculate the rate in mLs per hour for the first 5 minutes. So you start at 10 micrograms per kilogram per minute, okay? And based on the patient's weight of 65 kilograms, we get 650 micrograms per minute. Now pay attention to this. The prescription said increase the infusion by 2 micrograms per kilogram per minute every 5 minutes. So that means you will increase after 5 minutes, okay? So if it was 9 a.m. to 9.05, uh, AM, you would not increase exactly at 9.05 AM. You're going to increase the rate at 9.05 and one second, right? So one second after that fifth minute, that's when you will increase the rate by two micrograms per kilogram per minute. So in this case, the first five minutes, the bag will be running as 10 micrograms per kilogram per minute or 650 micrograms per minute. Now, the question wants the answer in mLs per hour. So this is where it gets a little bit easier. So 650 micrograms per minute in 60 minutes is going to be 39,000 micrograms per 60 minutes or per hour. You convert that to mLs per hour using the concentration of the IV bag, right? So it's 200 milligrams in 100 mL. You find that 39,000 microgram is the same as 39 milligram. You set up a proportion. So 200 milligrams of drug in 100 ml, 39 milligrams of drug in X, right? And you get 19.5 mLs per hour. Next question. Calculate the change in the rate of infusion in mLs per hour after 5 minutes. So after the first titration, right? After you increase the rate for the first time. Now, the change in the rate of infusion after five minutes means for the first five minutes of the bag, for the first five minutes, the bag was running at a certain rate, right? And we found that out in the previous question. After five minutes, right? So one second, literally after five minutes, we increased the rate. What was the change between the initial rate, the first five minutes, and this new rate after we increased it? The initial rate was 19.5 mLs per hour. So one second after the fifth minute, right? One second after the five minutes, let's just say, we increase the rate by two micrograms per kilogram per minute. Based on the patient's weight, we get 130 micrograms per minute or 7,800 micrograms per hour or 7.8 milligrams per hour. Okay, now if we use the concentration of the bag, 200 milligrams in 100 ml, we could find out how many mLs that would be. So that will be 3.9 mLs. And based on this, we converted, we converted it to per hour already. So in this case, it's going to be 3.9 mLs per hour. Now the new rate after five, five minutes will be 19.5 mLs per hour plus 3.9 mLs per hour, right? So the initial rate 
plus the increase, right? After you titrate, you add 3.9 ml per hour. So the new rate, right, will be 23.4 ml per hour. Now the question is asking for the change in the rate. So the change in the rate between the new rate, 23.4 ml hour per hour, minus the initial rate of 19.5 ml per hour, will be 3.9 ml per hour. I understand there's a shorter way to do this, but I like to break down everything for you guys so you understand fully or for somebody else who didn't know, okay? Next question. Calculate the rate in mLs per hour after 10 minutes. So after you increase the rate again, after the second titration up. Now the initial rate was 19.5 mLs per hour for the first five minutes. So let's say zero to five minutes. Then we found out that whenever we increase the rate by two micrograms per kilogram per minute for this specific patient, it's the same as 3.9 mLs per hour. Now, the rate after the first titration is 23.4 mLs per hour. So, when it was 5 minutes and 1 second, right, we titrated it up the first time, okay? And we found that that, that rate would be 23.4 mLs per hour. And the bag would be running for another 5 minutes. So, 5 minutes and 1 second to 10 minutes, it would be running at 23.4 mLs per hour. Now, one second after that 10th minute, we're going to increase the rate once again, okay? So we're going to increase the rate by 3.9 mLs per hour after the 10 minutes. And the rate in mLs per hour after the 10 minutes or after the second titration will be 23.4 mLs per hour plus 3.9 mLs per hour, which will give us 27.3 mLs per hour. Assume the patient is stable after the second titration. At what time would the bag be empty if started at 9 a.m.? The question is saying, okay, since the patient is stable now after we titrated up the second time, no need to titrate up anymore. Keep that same rate until the bag finish and send the patient to the OR, right? Or whatever the case is. Now, the initial rate was 9, 8, from 9 a.m. to 9.05 a.m., was 19.5 mLs per hour. We want to know how much did the patient really receive between that first five minutes. We convert that into mLs per minute, we multiply by five minutes, and we find that the patient got 1.625 mLs. We do that for the first titration also. So it was 23.4 mLs per hour for between 9.05 and one second to 9.10 a.m. And we find that the patient got 1.95 mLs. For that minute, for the for that five minutes, then we do it for the second titration, right? So after the ten minutes, right? So it was nine ten, right? Nine ten oh one a.m. to nine fifteen a.m. Assuming that it was running for like just five minutes, right? Okay, so that will give you twenty seven point three mLs per hour. You find out how much the patient got in five minutes. You get two point two seven five mLs per hour. So if you total this up, you get that the patient received 5.845 mLs of the IV bag from 9 a.m. to 9.15 a.m. Now the bag contains 100 mL. And we just found out that between 9 a.m. and 9.15 a.m., the patient received 5.845 mLs. So the total amount in the bag is 100 ml. We subtract, we get 94.155 mLs left in that bag. Now remember that the rate remained the same after the second titration. Okay, and it remained this uh, rate until the bag finished. So the bag will be running at 0.455 mLs per minute until it's completed. So now we need to know that if the bag is running at this rate, per minute, how long will it take to complete 94.155 mLs? And if you divide, you get 206.93 minutes until the bag finishes. Now 206.93 minutes divided by 60 minutes is 3.448 hours, or if you round it up, you get 3.45 hours, okay? Now if 0.5 hours, right, or half an hour is 30 minutes, then 0.45 hours, right, 0.45 of an hour is 27 minutes, okay? So it took 3 hours and 27 minutes more until the bag finish, and this is very important. So remember, from 9 a.m. to 9.15 a.m., the bag was infused 
and the patient got 5.845 ml. And now you need three hours and 27 minutes more to complete the rest, which is 94.155 ml. The bag started at 9 a.m. and therefore it will finish approximately at 12.42 p.m. Second prescription. This is 60 milligrams of drug Y and 100, 100 ml of normal saline or dextrose or whatever the case is. The prescription is telling us to begin the infusion at 15 micrograms per kilogram per minute for 10 minutes. Then increase the infusion rate of drug Y by 3 micrograms per kilogram per minute every 5 minutes for the next 20 minutes. Discontinue the infusion after that and send the patient to the OR. Calculate the infusion rate in mLs per hour for the first 10 minutes of the infusion. It started at 15 micrograms per kilogram per minute. With the patient weight, we found that it's 1,200 micrograms per minute. Remember, this would be the rate for the first 10 minutes because as per the question, you want to begin the infusion at 15 micrograms per kilogram per minute for the first 10 minutes. That's what the question is asking for, so pretty straightforward, right? So 1,200 micrograms per minute over 60 minutes is 72,000 micrograms per minute or per hour. We know the concentration of the IV bag, therefore, we could convert into mLs per hour and we get 120 mLs per hour for the first 10 minutes. Calculate the change in the rate of infusion and in mLs per hour between the first 5 minutes and the last 5 minutes of the infusion. According to the answer for the first question, the infusion rate in mLs per hour for the first 10 minutes is 120 mLs per hour. Therefore, the rate for the first 5 minutes will be 120 mLs per hour also. Now, you want to increase by 3 micrograms per kilogram per minute every 5 minutes for the next 20 minutes after the initial infusion, right? After the initial rate, I should say. Now, 3 micrograms per kilogram per minute based on the patient's weight is 240 micrograms per minute, which is 14,400 micrograms per hour because we multiply by 60. And that's the same as 14.4 milligrams per hour. We have the concentration of the IV bag, 60 milligrams and 100 ml. So we find that whenever we increase by 3 micrograms per kilogram per minute, for this specific patient, okay, that's going to be the same as 24 mLs per hour. So the question is saying every five, every five minutes, you will increase, right, or add 24 mLs per hour to the initial rate or to the rate that came before that, right? So for the first 10 minutes, it was 120 mLs per hour. First 10 minutes, right, 120 mLs per hour. So let's say that was 9 a.m. to 9, 10 a.m. As per the question, titrate up every five minutes for 20 minutes. Therefore, you must titrate up four times after the initial 10 minutes. So after the first titration, you're going to get 24 ml per hour plus 120 ml per hour, which was the initial rate. And you get 144 ml per hour, right? And that's going to be one second after the initial phase, right? After the first 10 minutes. And then you're going to do that for five minutes. After five minutes, you're going to increase the rate again by 24 mLs per hour. You're going to add it to the previous rate. You're going to get 168. So you keep doing that, and you're going to find that for the rate, the rate for the, the last five minutes is 216 mLs per hour. Okay, so after the fourth uh, titration, right, that would be your last um, five minutes, okay? Because you had, this was your initial rate. Right, this was your first five minutes falls into this phase, right? Then your last five minutes is gonna fall into this phase, okay? And the rate for that last five minutes is 216 mLs per hour. So the change in the rate is 216 mLs per hour minus 120 mLs per hour, which will give you 96 mLs per hour. Calculate the infusion rate in mLs per hour at the 21 minute mark in the infusion. The initial rate was from 9 a.m. to 9, 10 a.m., okay? And it was 120 mLs per hour, okay? Then we titrate up for five minutes, okay? So then the rate became 144 mLs per hour. Then we titrate up again after the second, titrate up again second time. 
So 915. Uh after after 915, right? So one second after 915, we tried we titrated up the second time, and the rate was 168 mLs per hour. Now remember that's within 20 minutes, okay? The question is asking at the 21 minute mark. So you gotta titrate it up. You gotta titrate up a third time, okay? So after you titrate up a third time, it's gonna be 192, 192 mLs per hour. So the rate at 21 minutes will be 192 mLs per hour. Pretty straightforward, right? How many milli how many milliliters of solution are left in the IV bag after it was discontinued at the 30 minute mark? Okay. Pretty straightforward. We have the timing uh, left here. Okay, we have the timing here for you, and also you know what the rate was in mls and mls per hour. So all you have to do is convert it into per minute. Okay, so for the first phase, it was two mls per minute actually, because it was 120 mls per hour. We divide that by 60, we get two mls per minute. Okay, and it was running for 20. I mean for 10 minutes, right? So the patient got 20 ml. You do that for the next phase, you find that it was 2.4 ml per minute. The patient was getting it for 5 minutes, it was 12 ml. You do it for the following, it's 14 ml, 16 ml, 18 ml, okay? At 30 minutes, the total volume infused was 20 ml plus 12 ml plus 14 ml plus 16, 16 ml plus 18 ml, right? Which equals to 80 ml, okay? Now the bag is 100 ml, so at the 30 minute mark, 20 ml is left in the bag. Okay guys, I hope this was like pretty straightforward. We have the time in here for you, okay? You had the initial infusion phase right here, and then you titrate it up four times. One, two, three, four, okay? And then they told you discontinue and then send the patient to the OR. Okay, so the patient didn't really finish the bag. So at the 30 minute mark, you stop the bag and you find that there's actually 20 mLs left in the bag. If this video was helpful, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. If there was anything I could do better, please let me know. Give me feedback. I want to become the best teacher for you all. If you have any ideas for videos, inform me so I can create them. Remember, that's what I'm here for. Anyways, I would appreciate it if you follow me on these social platforms. That's where I provide constant updates, pharmacy-related tips, and pharmacy news. Thank you for watching this video, and take care.